It's time for Inside the L, the podcast covering all things LaSalle athletics and taking you behind the scenes. And now, here's your host, Ed LaFerge. What's going on, Explorers fans, and welcome back to Inside the L, the podcast. I'm your host, Ed LaFerge. This episode is brought to you by our friends at JD McGillicuddy's. Go check them out. They have some fantastic food. Uh, You want to keep up with us as new episodes come out. Make sure you go and subscribe, leave a review on Apple Podcasts, follow us on Spotify, and subscribe on YouTube. All you have to do is search LaSalle Athletics on all three platforms. This past weekend, the men's and women's track and field teams competed at the Atlantic 10 Championships and brought some hardware back to 20th and only. I'm going to be joined on this episode by a pair of gold medalists for the Explorers in junior L. Mancini and senior Dennis Mania. First up, it's going to be L. Mancini. L, thanks so much for joining the podcast. How are things going? Good. Thanks for having me. Uh, we're happy to have you here. First off, congratulations on taking home gold in the 10K at the A10 Championships. And uh, from what I understand, your first gold medal of your career, correct? Yeah, that's correct. I'm really excited about it. Yeah. Well, what is that feeling like to you know, yeah. be coming back to campus and, and being a gold medalist? I mean, it's awesome. It's unreal. You know, when was the moment that you knew that you were going to take home gold in in that event? Um, So the 10K is 25 laps, and I don't think I knew until about 200 meters to go. Um, My sister, Liz Mancini, my twin, we ran like the whole race, you know, one behind each other. And um, I didn't really break away from her until about 200 meters to go, I would say. And you know, you mentioned it, it was close and Liz took the silver. Um, you know, you, you had almost 10 seconds on her and you had about 26 seconds on the third place finisher. What does that say about how hard you work and, and, and train for these events? Um, so that's actually one of the things I love about LaSalle and specifically my team is that it's a group of really hardworking girls and being in an environment where everyone wants to work hard and succeed just makes it that much easier for me to go out and work hard every day. And, and yeah, I imagine there's got to be some trash talking between you and Liz. You're, you're sitting there running <laughs> neck and neck one and two. Is there like, uh, you know, did you say to her, hey, let me take this one and, and I'll get you on the next one? Or uh, how does that work? When, at what point do you decide, all right, you two need to start competing against each other? <laughs> So um, there's always some friendly competition, but um, we went into that race, you know, wanting to work together for at least until maybe like a mile to go and then to kind of see who had more in them at that point. So I would say we worked together for about the first five miles of the of the race and then kind of the last mile was who has more left in the tank. Makes sense. Uh, how much training and preparation goes into your craft? I feel like every time I'm on campus, I see you and your sisters running around, coming up 20th, going down Worcester, wherever. I feel like I see you everywhere. Yeah, so a ton of preparation. We train year round. Um, everybody's trains look a little different. For me, mine includes about 75 mile weeks, which is a lot. Um, so throughout the entire year I don't even know what that is 75 times 52 it's a lot of miles so a lot of preparation and and is there something about distance running that drew you to it um yeah so the thing I really like about distance running is that um if you're a hard worker you can be good at it so even maybe there's somebody out there who has more talent than you but if you work really 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 hard you can beat someone who has more talent. It's who's willing to do more work, who is more grit, who's tougher, really. That's what drew me to it. And so, obviously, the the cross-country teams, um, back in 2019, the last time we actually had a a, a real season pre-COVID, brought home the A-10 titles. Did that put a little taste in your mouth to want to get after it a little more and, and, and maybe get some during the track and field season? Oh, yeah, that definitely definitely made me eager to keep training and keep working hard, see how far we can go. Hopefully we can bring back that title in my time here. We, we certainly hope that we see that um, before you graduate. Uh, what's it like working with Coach Peterson? I mean, he's a guy who's been at LaSalle for a while. He's had some success with, with individuals on the track and field squad. And then obviously, 
you know, highlighted by the, the, the cross country championships, for both the men's and the women's squad. What's it like working with him? It's awesome. Um, so Tom's a really unique coach. One of the things I really love about him is that um, he cares about you, not just as an athlete, but as an individual. So it's not just how are you going to perform or how hard, how's your training going? It's, you know, how's school going? How's your life going? And he really prioritizes you as a whole person, not just you as an athlete. Um, and then another thing I really like about Tom is that with four of us on the team, me and my three sisters, he really makes an effort to like get to know us and get to know the differences between us and that we're individuals, not just like, you know, a group of four sisters, which I really like. Well, you speak of your three sisters being on the team with you and um, Liz is your twin, correct? Correct. <laughs> so the two of you are twins. You have Grace, who's your older sister and has been at LaSalle and has been extremely successful at LaSalle. And then your younger sister, who's a sophomore, Christine, is here as well. Yes, correct. And, you know, for, for you guys, like you see Grace come here a year before you. Um, or what was that? You know, you saw the experience that she had. Was that did, did, did that play a role in you wanting to come to LaSalle? Oh, definitely. Um, when Grace would come home from breaks for her first when her first year, she would talk about how much she loved LaSalle mm -hmm. and tell all these great stories and talk about the training and Tom and her teammates. And it just kind of made me fall in love with the school before I even got here. And then when I came on my visit, I was like, this is the school for me. It was Not to mention thing. she um, the success she had, her progression through the four years of her running and her academics, everything. It just can't find a better school. <laughs> well, we're certainly happy to have you guys here. That's for sure. Um, what's it like having your sisters here with you? Is, is there some built-in comfort there? So that way, if you know, I mean, you guys certainly aren't too far away from LaSalle where you're originally from, but um, is there some sort of comfort knowing that you have them here just in case? Oh, definitely. When I step up to the line and I have, you know, maybe in track one or two or even three or in, during cross when I have all three of them on the line with me, um, it just is comforting knowing that I'm getting out there and doing the same thing they're doing. And at the finish line, there's going to be someone there waiting for me, you know, ready to pick me up if I fall and everything. Um, especially with Grace. Grace has really taught me the ins and out of, um, you know, collegiate running collegiate, everything to do with college, really. You know, we talked a little bit before about how there might be some friendly competition amongst you guys. Do you guys ever like, uh, you know, uh, make head to head like arguments? Who's going to who's going to come out first or who's going to take this one? <laughs> no, we have a friendly level of competition, but it's, um, you know, I love to see I love to see them succeed and they love to see me succeed. Uh, we actually do have a little beach race every year um oh, yeah? when we go on vacation yeah it's like a 100 meter dash so that's the only time we all want to beat each other <laughs> <laughs> where now is this that you go on vacation the same spot every year is this is 100 meter happen at the same location yeah sea isle city in new jersey my huh. dad hops in and he sees if he can beat if he can beat the four of us so you have to tell me this who who's the reigning champ Ah, uh, it's got to be Bean. Bean has the most speed out of all of us. Okay. All right. Well, listen, <laughs> Elle, we really appreciate you um, chatting with us about um, your experience at LaSalle and, you know, taking home gold in the 10K at the, at the A-10s this past weekend. We're super proud of you, um, and congratulations you. again. Thanks so much. All right. That's Elle Mancini. She placed first in the 10K at the Atlantic 10 Championships this past weekend for outdoor track and field. Sit here tight. We're going to get a few words from our sponsors. And then Dennis Mania is going to join us the two time, two times in a row gold medalist in the high jump. Stay here. We'll be right back. Sports are back and at LaSalle, they truly are something special. And boy, come game day, we take it to the next level. Fans are locked in, wearing their finest blue and gold. But it's only a real game day at LaSalle when you have done one more thing. Break out the hers. 
dial up the crunch with hers pub pretzels. Going for the snack win doesn't get easier or tastier. You break out the crunchy dip receiver with hers ridge chips. Both go perfectly with cheering on the explorers to the last second. Game time, halftime, overtime. It's your time to break out the hers. Building a great team takes many years of practice. I'm Dennis Pagliotti, and at the Bricklayers and Ally Craft Workers Local 1 of Pennsylvania, Delaware, we've been practicing since 1865. Check us out at bac-1.org. That's bac-1.org. The men and women of IBEW Local Union 98 support LaSalle University and the Explorers. From the time of Tom Gola to Lionel Simmons, and to this day, the members of Local 98 have provided the electrical, wiring, and network needs for LaSalle. For more information, look us up online at IBEW98.org. All right, we're back with Dennis Mania. That's right. He is a two-time, two-in-a-row gold medalist in the high jump at the Atlantic uh, at the Atlantic 10 Outdoor Track and Field Championship. Dennis, Congratulations. Thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. How are things going, dude? Uh, well, right now my back is sore. Um, <laughs> I'm tired, but uh, I, I'm still feeling really good off that win. Yeah, I, I can imagine. Well, go. Well, you'll have to go down, get in the AT room, get some treatment, rest up, because uh, Thursday <laughs> you guys got another meet, right? Uh, no, I'm not competing again until regionals. Okay. Okay, so yeah. what's that? This weekend, correct? Uh, no, that's the at the end of May. The end of May. Yeah, right. so, so I get time. You can relax a little bit. Get yeah, a little get the body back. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, congrats on your second straight gold medal uh, in the high jump. Uh, you also broke your leap from last go around at the championships with a new A10 record. Um, yeah. What was going through your mind leading up to and, and, and through the event? Well, uh, like that whole week, uh, me and Coach Remington, we were just like joking around and I was like, yeah, I don't like that I share that record with someone else. And like, that was the whole mindset. Like, I just wanted to take the record so bad. So we like, the week before I came in at 206, which is like 6'9", and he's trying to get me comfortable with coming in at like higher heights. So I did it again at conference and I'm like, all right, I got that pretty good. This might be, you know, that record that's going today. So when I finally did that, like the first two jumps were fouls, but like I was way over and I'm like, if I don't get this record, I don't know if I, like, I don't know how I'm going to feel about myself. So I finally took deep breaths, focused up. And on that third jump, I just got it hit the bar a little bit, got some bar love. It didn't drop, and I was real happy. Yeah, I would imagine, and that's that's so exciting. What, you know, what moment did you know that, like, you were taking home gold? Was it as soon as you saw what your score was? Did you know nobody was going to be able to beat that? It was 209, uh, which is about, like, 610-ish. It was me and the George Mason kid. He uh, His name's Cason Gardner. He was also jumping, and... I was going to skip from 206 to 212, but uh, I decided I'm just going to do 209 because I wanted to secure, make sure I secure the win. And I didn't want to fumble anything, mess anything up. So I was like, all right, I'm going to do this 209. And if he doesn't do it, I won. So that's, that's what happened. When he didn't clear it, I was the winner. And I just kept going up from there. So you knew you had the gold before you even broke the record. You, you took it. Yeah. After, you took it. Uh, how many more jumps did you take? in order to get the record uh two two more yeah, heights up after that well it was three because 212 i tried i got it on the second try so yeah like three to four more jumps and then i got the record so you've established yourself as one of the best student athletes not only at la salle but in the atlantic 10 how much work and preparation goes in, in into your regimen you know is there something special that you do that you think helps you separate yourself from the rest of the pack? Uh, I really, I don't know. Like, I just, I feel like I have this, this drive just to do my best with whatever, like I can come to practice. And sometimes I will joke around with coach. Like he'll say, 
we have like three three hundreds all out or something. And I'll be like, dang coach, I don't know if I could do that. But he knows when when I get out there on the track, I'm gonna give them like one hundred percent. So like I feel like for me it's just putting all I have into it. Like I, I just put everything I have into it, lay it all down and I hope for the best results. What's uh what do you credit that drive to? Is 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 there something that you know, you've gone through that, that makes you uh, that competitive is, is there a significant person in your life that kind of instilled that into you? What, where does that come from? That's, that's a really good question. I really, I've never thought about that. Uh, it could be a multitude of things. Um, could be, you know, just uh, being born in Liberia and coming here when I was two and just my parents driving into the fact that, you know, I was lucky to be in America, lucky to be here, and that I have to make the best of that opportunity. So growing up hearing that just always made me feel like I had to do my best in whatever it is that I do. What, uh, I mean, obviously you, you, you probably don't remember coming here. What, yeah, I don't. <laughs> what has it been like growing up here? I imagine uh, you, you have a lot of family back in Liberia. Yeah. So, so what's it like being far away from your family? Do you, you go back and visit often? What, what's that been like for you? Um, I haven't gone back to visit yet. Um, I'm still planning on going back. Uh, want to meet my dad cause I got separated from him because of the civil war there. So I've like my grandma basically brought like her side of the family here and like everyone on my dad's side is still over there in Liberia. So uh, it's been pretty difficult, but um, I just try to, you know, use all of that to help me focus and, and drive me. So do you, you say you want to meet your dad. Have you been able to talk to him on the phone or, or anything like that? Yeah, yeah, we talk, <laughs> well, we talk a lot on Facebook, man. Like Facebook is really for like international chatting I'll be honest like that's where we that's where we connect and we video chat sometimes but yeah we we, we connect there wow, that's that's such an interesting story um you know what what was it like for you like knowing your dad and and your family was back there while all of that civil war and and you know unrest was going on um I don't even like I didn't think about it and I didn't even learn about like everything that happened till just recently, like two to three years ago when my mom finally talked to me about it. So it was never like something that was in my head. The only thing I knew was that, you know, my grandma would always say like, oh, you don't understand what it's like back there. And basically compare how easy I have it to how like the rest of my family has it. And just knowing that, makes me want to do better, if not for myself, for them. JRM supplier consulting strategic services include competitive sourcing analysis, development of supplier contracts, contract negotiations, supplier contract management, and relationship building. We will help you establish procurement methodologies and utilize best practices for competitive sourcing event development and management. We provide experiential, Benefits for HR, finance, accounting, marketing, IT, supply chain, sales operations, and legal. For more information, visit us online at jrmsupplierconsulting.com. Since 1974, Sheeran Environmental Design has provided the highest quality landscape design and build services at the most cost-effective prices. Located in Plymouth Meeting, and four regional offices throughout the greater Delaware Valley, Chiron Environmental Design is prepared to offer professional design, build, and maintenance services to address a wide range of landscape design needs. Chiron maintains specialty divisions in golf, sports, civil engineering, and interiors. To learn more, check us out today at ChironDesign.com. LaSalle fans, are you looking for something to get embroidered or imprinted? If so, let Campus Clothes help you get the look. Whether your team is in the corporate office or on the athletic field, Campus Clothes can supply your team with all its needs. 
Choose from a variety of t-shirts, uniforms, fleeces, polo shirts, and jackets. Visit us on the web at campusclothes.com. That's K-A-M-P-U-S-K-L-O-T-H-E-S.com. Or give us a call at 215-357-0892. That's 215-357-0892. Looking good is the first step to playing well. Campus Clothes, get the look. You transferred to LaSalle after spending some time at Eastern Michigan. Um, yeah. What led to your decision to choose LaSalle and, and what has your experience been like? Oh, that's a funny story. <laughs> um, well, I just, at Eastern Michigan, I just decided I didn't want to stay there anymore. So I called up my high school coach and he he was like, well, you know, when you were in high school, LaSalle was looking at you. And I was like, oh, really? And I was like, all right, I'll reach out to them and see how that goes. But I was really planning on trying to transfer to Houston. But something happened and I just didn't want to do it anymore. And I was like, all right, I'm just going to see LaSalle and kind of be local and see how it, how it feels to be close to home. And talk to Coach Erica. I, I knew people that were here already uh, on the team. So it was like a very easy transition. What's your experience been like so far at LaSalle? Oh, it's been, it's been great, honestly. Like at first it was a little like, you know, all right, I'm the new guy. We'll see how they, you know, treat me. But they were like really open, really friendly. Took me in and it's been great since then. Well, that's we're obviously very uh, excited and glad that you decided to come to LaSalle. I mean, you're, you're, you're killing it out there, man. What? Yeah. Thank you. What's next for you? Where, where, where do you go from here? Well, <clears throat> next I plan to go to regionals. Uh, my biggest goal is just to make NCAAs. Like I plan to go to regionals and just, snap off something crazy hit a huge pr and just go to go to nationals and go all american like that's my goal my overall goal and i hope i can make it happen well listen we're going to be supporting you every step of the way we're really proud of you dennis uh thanks so much for for joining us here on the podcast and and hopefully in uh you know a couple weeks you'll be able to come back on and talk about how regionals and and the ncaa's went all right, we'll see about that. <laughs> That's Dennis Mania. He plays gold at the Atlantic 10 Outdoor Track and Field Championship this past weekend for the second year in a row and also set uh, an A-10 record uh, for the high jump. So we're super proud of him. We thank him. We thank L for joining us here on Inside the L, the podcast. I'm your host, Ed LaFerge. It's been a great one, folks. We'll see you again on the next episode. Thanks for listening to Inside the L, the podcast. Go Explorers! In today's economy, good financial advice is critical. That's why it's important to work with a team of dedicated financial advisors committed to listening to you, understanding your concerns, and helping you make sure all aspects of your financial life are aligned. At Crow Wealth Management at UBS Financial Services, we strive to provide advice tailored to your individual circumstances and all you'd like your wealth to achieve. Talk to us about how we can help you embrace your financial future with confidence. Reach out to Chris Crow at 609-677-2243. It's time. Time to get a health plan that's perfect for times like this. A plan that has you covered for free doctor visits 24-7 with telemedicine and more. Get the plan more people choose than any other. Call 1-855-251-3131 today to get an Independence Blue Cross plan. Peter Buxbaum founded Philadelphia Mortgage Company with one goal in mind, to help people make smarter, better informed financial decisions when looking to purchase a home. With 40 years of experience and well over 10,000 clients served, PMC is committed to providing financial solutions and guiding individuals through the mortgage process. For your mortgage need, call Peter Buxbaum at 215-740-8999 or visit philadelphiamortgage.com.